they would these were considered temperance drinks because the Puritans in particular were against or, or tried to limit the amount of alcohol and so they didn't like to mix politics with alcohol. So this is tea houses uh, came after coffee houses. So first chocolate and coffee houses and then tea houses and the tea houses are the ones that took off to the point that today uh, England is a tea country and America, I would say, is a coffee country uh, with tea second until they invented ice to put in your tea and then also iced tea took off in Texas, right? Now in uh, 18, 1820, in 1828, a man in, uh, uh, in Holland invented what we call Dutch chocolate. Now Dutch chocolate was originally a powder from which you could, in other words, you figured out a process to take that chocolate and, and to uh, evaporate out so you just had powder left. And then this chocolate powder became, was very valuable. And chocolate powder um, was, until this, until this invention, uh, before that, it was only in drink form, but after this, after 1828, uh, 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 the chocolate then was started put in bar form. And they experimented and tried different things. But of course, it's when they figured out how to put um, chocolate together in a bar form with that sugar that it really took off uh, as a, and uh, I, I think it's so hilarious today we have these chocolate bars that say 60% cacao <laughs> or 72% cacao right because supposedly that's the that has all the value nutritional value and sugar has like zero nutritional value uh, ironic. Anyway, um, in England, there were three great chocolate families. One was called Cadbury, one was called Fry, and one was called Roundtrees. Now, we're in America, so we only know Hershey's, right? But uh, more recently, Cadbury uh, was briefly owned by uh, Dr. Pepper Snapple Group, right? Is, is, are they still on it? They, they sold it again. Oh, yeah. Sold it. <clears throat> yeah, it's hard to keep up. But anyway, originally these three men, Cadbury, Fry, and Roundtrees, these are all Quakers. Now, why would the Quakers be so interested in chocolate candy? Chocolate bars. Yeah, exactly. Anything they could find that would, would uh, get people away from alcohol. So <coughs> I would say, I would, I would make the case that of life's um, great pleasures in the field of eating, uh, chocolate has to be near the top, right? Now, you will occasionally find somebody who doesn't like chocolate, but they're rare. Most people say, <laughs> you know, you might argue over milk chocolate versus uh, dark chocolate. By the way, uh, in, in, in Switzerland, there was a man named Nestle, and Nestle had invented uh, evaporated milk. Now, evaporated milk is really important because Nestle got together with a, a young man named Tobler, T-O-B-L-E-R, Tobler, and they invented milk chocolate. Now, some people, I would say, uh, prefer milk chocolate, but but it was hugely popular because it was the first that those little triangular bars that Tobler still sells, uh, yeah, you'll see them still occasionally here. Uh, that's the first milk chocolate bar. And Cadbury, uh, in 1861, invented uh, the candy, uh, invented the, the uh, what do I want to say, Valentine's Day box, the heart. And, and then put in various kinds of can, chocolate candy in it. And, and so anyway, um, what happened then, a, a man named Lindt, L-E-N-D-T. We have Lindt candy here, also a popular chocolate <coughs> in America. Lindt uh, invented conching. Now conching is this process of smoothing it out, right? And uh, I remember the first time I had a Godiva bar. 
Have you ever heard of Godiva? Uh, I had my first Godiva bar, and uh, you know, I grew up on Hershey's like you all did, right? And so I have a Godiva bar, and I, I'm just trying to, this seems so something, smooth or something, you know? It, and it didn't have any bitterness, right? Well, the reason <coughs> the Americans are very used to having this little just touch of bitter taste is because of a man named Milton Hershey. Now, Milton Hershey was also very devout in his religious tradition, which were Mennonite, and they also were trying to find food that would take people, that would substitute in some way for alcohol. So Hershey invented uh, in, in, in the uh, 1900s, <coughs> uh, early 1900s, he invented the Hershey bar, and then very, very early on, one of his uh, new products was called Hershey's Kisses. It goes all the way back to 1907. Now Hershey, of course, took a little town in uh, Pennsylvania called Derry, and uh, there he built his great factory. And ultimately became the, the greatest um, factory town in America. It was, uh, of course, named changed to Hershey. And Hershey provided all these services to the people. So you have Hershey Park, Hershey Hotel, Hershey Bank, Hershey Library. Everything's Hershey in Hershey, Pennsylvania. All the streets are named, you know, after chocolate. Hershey had to have cane sugar, though. Now, he learned this from Henry Ford. Now, Henry Ford, of course, had this idea that the company should produce all the products. So her, uh, Ford would, would buy up uh, a forest and then get the wood he needed or buy up a coal mine or buy up uh, iron ore. And, and in other words, the company, well, Hershey wanted to do this, so he created a, he created a huge plantation for sugar cane in Cuba and then built a railroad to, to the port. What's interesting, one of the best railroads running today in Cuba is Hershey's Railroad. Uh, uh, again, another irony. Um, well, anyway, uh, Hershey uh, was taken, when, he, when Hershey died, was taken over by a man named Murray. And Murray's son was in uh, business with a guy named Forrest Mars. And Forrest Mars um, and, and Murray uh, cooked up a, a, new, bar, a, a new chocolate uh, product known as M&M, &M, which stands for Mars, Mars and Murray. And uh, so for the first 50 years of M&Ms, it was always made with Hershey chocolate. Now, of course, they're kind of enemies. Mar uh, Forrest Mars uh, is the same guy that I mentioned, I think, last week that uh, created Uncle Ben's converted rice. And, uh, and it's a very, it was a huge product for, for, uh, for Mars. And uh, by the way, privately owned, nobody knows what goes on inside the Hershey plant. One other famous chocolate <coughs> provider in America is Whitman. And Whit the Whitman sampler came out in 1912, and you can still go down to the store this morning and buy a Whitman sampler. So it's been very successful. Can Time's I disturb up? disturb just a moment? Mm -hmm. If there's someone that has a Cadillac Escalade gray SUV, we need you to move it. Thank you. Nobody here. Get by the electronic sign blocking. Mm. Okay. Um, well, uh, um, I know you're. Uh, would like perhaps hear more about chocolate, but our Carolyn has given me the blinking eyes, <laughs> and then and then she moves out over here, and then she pulls out the hook, and, <laughs> and I'm gone. So I want to leave a minute. I just thought Carolyn and Caroline had something going on together. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, anything you, uh, on sugar or chocolate you want to comment on, or anything you'd like to ask about? Yes, ma'am. I just want to ask the question. You know, when chocolate was first uh, popular in Spain or whatever. Yeah. They were drinking it, were they drinking it with sugar or how was yeah. it? Yeah, well, exactly. 
So chocolate has had this kind of history of how much chocolate in the beginning, uh, how much sugar in the chocolate. And so there's, there's all kinds of experiments. But if you had, if you had the chocolate milk, for example, uh, if you, you like chocolate milk today, it's very made differently than the chocolate uh, drink was back then. For one thing, they kept all the cocoa butter in. Cocoa butter is what's valuable. And uh, they kept all the cocoa butter in and all this. And uh, so it's very, very potent drink, right? But if you've ever had straight chocolate, you call it bitter chocolate, it's pretty bad. It's always been the question of how can you have just enough sugar that it'll be palatable but not, not overwhelmed with sugar. And I would say uh, chocolate lost. I would say sugar overwhelms without question uh, in that candy and probably every candy. And not even, I, I went the other day, this is true, I went the other day and tried to find, uh, I like puffed wheat and puffed rice and that kind of thing. I tried to find one that isn't coated with sugar. Huh. You can. Right. You can. Yes, sir. <clears throat> There's seemingly some discussion in health circles yes. that chocolate is to a degree healthy for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And seemingly the darker it is, the 70 to 80 right. to 90 percent, right. is it healthy? And is the 70 to 80 90 percent more healthy than I'm, the less percent? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer that question, my dear friend, Kimmy Langkow. Well, would you have, Yeah, would anything you? over 70 percent that's pure cacao is super healthy for your heart. Super, and it's also great for your brain. Normally, things that are really good for your heart are going to be really good for your brain because they're really they're so connected. But you don't want the sugar in it because sugar is pure poison. And <coughs> Paul loves stories. And two great Hollywood icons knew this and would not allow it. Now, Joan Crawford was on the board of Pepsi, but she would not allow Pepsi in her house. Yet she's on the board. Nor would, she, or would she, nor would she allow sugar in her house. And same way with Gloria Swanson. Gloria Swanson said, this is pure poison. It would try to tell people you can't be eating poison. So back to the idea of pure cacao. If you buy cacao powder, matter of fact, Dr. Stephen Gundry, great cardiologist, has a product called Heart Defense, and it's made with pure cacao powder. And so you could buy pure cacao powder up at natural grocers. Mm -hmm. It comes in a bag, and you can get the idea of what the... Uh, just a, and you can add hot water to it or you can put it in your coffee and you'll taste it gets really really thick now it's not sweet at all it's bitter yeah. but that's where the more bitter it is the, the more nutritional value there it's going to have there you go so 80-90% yeah. chocolate bars are phenomenal reports? Yeah. phenomenal <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> no just be careful look at be the careful. sugar content is it look at the sugar content in it because that negates all the good part of it. Yeah. So now you can also buy something called cacao nibs. Yeah, that's what I eat. And cacao nibs are bitter, but you can put them in different products and you can mix it in other things and or you could even chew on them a little bit and they're they're a good little snack, but they're highly, highly nutritious. Cacao and what? Cacao nibs. nibs yeah. N I B S. N I B S, okay. And you can buy that up at natural grocers or at Whole Foods as well, cacao nibs. Trader Joe's has the best cacao nibs there are, and they're coming in a little small package, and you can just keep them as a little snack, like, <laughs> like nuts, okay. and it'll satisfy you very quickly. But you'll get fabulous nutritional benefits for that for your brain and your heart. One, one, one last question, please. Go ahead. In this Bill Tone, when he said there are a couple of very, very fine craft chocolate bars that are 100% at 100%. Uh, Whole Foods has one, and I believe Natural Grocery has. And they have little cacao, cacao nibs ground up in them to give them a little crunch. Wow. And it's only cocoa butter and mm -hmm. pure pure chocolate. No sugar. Because I'm, I'm sugar free. Right. I'm not up there with uh, Crawford and Swanson because right. I don't do sugar at all. But these mm -hmm. are fabulous things and all it only it just takes yeah. one or two, you know, little squares of it. <laughs> well, you're right. The, 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 the sugar is poison, to quote Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. refined sugar is the worst form of it. But how in the world? Yeah, Mike. Right. You mentioned that sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. Ah, <laughs> yes, and I believe that. <laughs> yeah, did you hear that? Sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. Now, by the way, do you know what salt? How how addictive is salt? Is, is it? it 
it's very addictive, but probably not that much, right? In relation to cocaine, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. Okay. One more question. Well, okay, quick, quick, quick. I just wanted to say that what really helped me to understand about sugar was the book entitled Sugar Blues, that's yes. Seller William Dufty. Right. And he gets into that information. Yes. So if you want to know about the sugar, its history, and well, absolutely. the, the um, plagues Mike, that followed it. Do you want to follow up with that? want to say a word about this book? Oh. That's right. <laughs> well, the land cops have just <laughs> finished reading. Don't look it up. I'll tell you, this it. book, Find as you it. said, is absolutely fantastic. It came out in 1976, it's still in 75. Yeah. But there's another one also that is a great researcher by Nancy Appleton. She was out there harping against sugar before Robert Lustiger, before it became popular. She has a book called Suicide by Sugar. Mm -hmm. It's breathtaking. Mm -hmm. To understand suicide, by, suicide by sugar. By sugar. So, Nancy Appleton. Very good. Well, we'd love to go on, but uh, yeah, Karen's, Karen's got the hook. So thank you. We'll see you next Sunday. Yeah.